9. Application and Underwriting When a life insurance company issues an insurance policy, it is entering into a contract, it agrees to undertake the risk of having to pay out a death benefit in exchange for the certainty of receiving a premium. Before the insurance company can decide whether this is a reasonable risk to take and what compensation, premium, is warranted, it must first assess this risk through its underwriting process. This chapter discusses the underwriting process from the initial application through policy issue and delivery. The life insurance industry has historically been slow to change, but the application and underwriting process has been undergoing a modernization process over the past five or so years, making better use of technology and artificial intelligence, AI. Many insurers have accelerated these changes in response to the global COVID-19 pandemic that started in 2020, and practices and processes will likely continue to evolve in the coming years. Depending on the insurance company, the amount of the coverage being applied for and the age of the life insured, many of these steps may now be automated and may happen electronically or virtually. 9.1 Process Overview This section provides an overview of the traditional application and underwriting process, the specifics are covered in more detail later in this chapter, along with modernization and automation changes. 9.1.1 Agent's Role A life insurance agent is not responsible for personally assessing the risk presented by the applicant, that is the job of the insurance company's underwriter. The agent's role in the underwriting process is to help collect the information that the insurance company needs to perform its risk assessment. His role is a critical one because he is often the only insurance company representative who actually sees the applicant or the life insured, if different from the applicant, in person. In fact, it is often said that the agent is the eyes of the life insurance company, although today that contact may be virtual instead of face-to-face. 9.1.2 Completing the Application In an agent-client engagement, the first step in the underwriting process consists of the agent working with the applicant to complete a detailed application for insurance, as well as any related or supplementary forms. The agent must Black Small Square ensure that the information recorded on the application is complete and accurate. Black Small Square ensure that the applicant understands the consequences of providing incomplete or false information. Black Small Square confirm the identities of the applicant and the life insured, if different, by examining their identification, example, driver's license, passport. Black Small Square witness their signatures on the application. With recent modernizations, many applications can now be submitted electronically, with or without the assistance of any agent. Meetings often now happen virtually using teleconferencing applications. Rules have also been relaxed to allow electronic signatures and electronic policy delivery. 9.1.3 Underwriting the agent forwards the completed and signed application to the insurance company's underwriting department. Underwriting is the process an insurance company uses to assess the risk presented by the life insured. The underwriter starts by assigning the life insured a baseline score, such as 100, which represents the mortality risk posed by the average or standard person. Then, for a long list of medical, financial, and lifestyle criteria, the underwriter assesses the risk that the life insured presents and compares it to that of a standard person. If the life insured presents a lower mortality risk for specific criteria, then the score is reduced, while a higher mortality risk means the score is increased. The cumulative result over all of the criteria is used to assign the life insured to a risk class, discussed in more detail in the section Risk Classes and their impact on premiums. If the life insured's medical and non-medical evaluation and the amount of insurance being applied for fall within the insurance company's parameters for a standard policy, the application is usually underwritten quickly and the policy may be issued in as little as a few days. However, if these details fall outside the standard parameters, the underwriter will seek and evaluate additional information before making his decision. Some insurance companies now use algorithms and artificial intelligence, AI, to assist in the underwriting process, discussed in the section Accelerated Underwriting. 9.1.4 Issuing and Delivering the Policy after the life insurance company issues the policy, the agent must deliver it to the applicant. This is considered to be a continuation of the underwriting process because the agent must ensure that the medical, personal or financial situation of the applicant and the life insured, if different, has not changed since the application date. The agent can only complete delivery if he is satisfied that nothing has changed. This is discussed in more detail in the section issuing the policy. 
9.2 Application The application is critical to the underwriting of a new insurance policy, and in fact the agent's role in helping the client to complete the application is sometimes referred to as field underwriting. The agent assists the applicant either by providing guidance or by actually asking the questions verbally and then recording the responses. Depending on the insurance company and the type of policy being applied for, the application can range from 5 to 50 pages or even more. 9.2.1 Policy Details The application usually first gathers some basic information about the characteristics of the coverage the applicant is seeking. These details will define the terms of the policy. 9.2.1.1 Applicant Slash Policyholder The applicant is the person who wants to buy the policy and who will become the policyholder if the policy is issued. The application form will record the applicant's legal name, address, and contact information. If the applicant is not the life insured, the application will also ask for a contingent owner or successor owner, which is someone who will receive ownership of the policy if the original applicant slash policyholder dies. 9.2.1.2 Life Insured The applicant must identify a specific person as the life insured. Throughout this chapter, we make a distinction between the applicant, who will ultimately become the policyholder if a policy is issued, and the life insured. While in many cases the applicant will be the same person as the life insured, we have maintained the distinction of these roles throughout this chapter for clarity. For a joint life policy, the applicant will name two people and must specify whether the death benefit is to be paid upon the first death to occur, i.e., joint first to die coverage, or upon the death of the second life insured, i.e., joint last to die coverage. 9.2.1.3 Beneficiary The applicant must specify who will receive the death benefit if the life insured dies. The beneficiary can include one or more people or legal entities such as trusts or business corporations. He can also specify a contingent beneficiary who will receive the death benefit if the original beneficiary is no longer alive. If no beneficiary is entered, the default is the estate of the policy owner. If the applicant is not the life insured, he can also name himself as the beneficiary. If he is the life insured, he can name his estate as the beneficiary. Note that once the policy is issued, the policyholder can usually change the beneficiary designation unless the policy is irrevocable. An irrevocable beneficiary designation is sometimes required to comply with a court order for child or spousal support and is sometimes used for tax planning purposes. 9.2.1.4 Type of Policy Many insurance companies use a single application for a number of different life insurance products. If this is the case, there will be a spot on the application for the applicant to choose the type of life insurance policy he is applying for, example, term, participating or non-participating, universal life. For universal life, UL, policies, the applicant may also have to choose how the mortality deductions will be calculated, example, yearly renewable term or level cost of insurance, and how the death benefit is calculated, example, level death benefit plus account value or level death benefit plus cumulative premiums. For UL and whole life policies, most insurance companies require the agent to submit an illustration of the policy along with the application. By signing the application with the illustration attached, the applicant is confirming that he has been shown how the policy works. 9.2.1.5 Riders and Supplementary Benefits Similarly, if the insurance company allows policyholders to customize their coverage through a variety of riders and supplementary benefits, such as a guaranteed insurability benefit, GIB, or family coverage rider, there will be a spot on the application for the applicant to select these riders and benefits. In many cases, the applicant can only add these riders and supplementary benefits at the time of policy issue, although sometimes they can be added to an existing contract. Life Insurance Chapter 9, Application and Underwriting 168 9.2.1.6 Premium Options If the insurance company provides various options for paying premiums, example, annually, quarterly, monthly through pre-authorized checking, the applicant can indicate his choice on the application. 9.2.1.7 Dividend Options For participating whole life policies, the applicant must choose a dividend payment option, example, premium reduction, paid up additions, term insurance, when completing the application. 9.2.2 About the applicant when underwriting an insurance application, the insurance company will be taking a close look at the applicant, even if he is not the life insured. 
the application will seek information that will help the underwriter assess his black small square financial ability, black small square insurable interest, black small square justification for the amount of coverage, and black small square insurance application history. 9.2.2.1 Financial Ability One of the first things the underwriter will consider is whether or not the applicant has the financial means to afford policy premiums. To this end, the application may ask for details such as the applicant's black small square occupation or prior occupation if retired, black small square employer, black small square employment income, black small square additional sources of income, black small square net worth. If the applicant is dependent on someone else for financial support, example, a spouse, the underwriter may inquire about the financial means of the supporting person. 9.2.2.2 Insurable Interest If the applicant is not the life insured, the applicant will be asked to specify his relationship to the life insured. The applicant must have an insurable interest in the life insured at the time of policy issue. Generally, this means that the applicant must expect to suffer a financial loss or fail to make a financial gain if the life insured dies. It is typically accepted that a person has an insurable interest in his own life, as well as in the life of Black Small Square his child or grandchild Black Small Square his spouse Black Small Square any person upon whom he is wholly or partially dependent for support or education Black Small Square his employee Black small square any person in the duration of whose life he has a pecuniary interest. If an insurable interest does not exist at the time of policy issue, the contract is generally considered to be void. However, the insurable interest only has to exist at the time of policy issue. If the relationship between the policyholder and the life insured changes, such that an insurable interest no longer exists, the contract is still considered to be valid. Example when Isabel and her husband Justin had their first child, Justin bought a $500,000 20-year term life insurance policy on Isabel's life. Isabel and Justin divorced a few years later and Isabel has since remarried. Justin no longer has an insurable interest in Isabel's life, the existing policy remains valid, but Justin would likely not be able to buy any additional coverage on Isabel's life. An exception to the insurable interest requirement applies if the life insured consents in writing to insurance being placed on his life. Usually the life insured is required to confirm his consent by signing the insurance application. Example Justin's next-door neighbor, Caleb, is an adventurous person who has a passion for extreme sports and travel. When Justin heard that Caleb was planning to go on a solo snowmobile expedition to the North Pole, Justin joked that he should buy life insurance on Caleb's life. However, Justin does not have an insurable interest in Caleb's life, so the only way he could buy insurance on his life would be to obtain Caleb's written consent. Life Insurance Chapter 9, Application and Underwriting 170 9.2.2.3 Justification of Amount of Coverage In addition to determining if the applicant has an insurable interest in the life insured, the underwriters will consider whether the amount of coverage is reasonable in the circumstances. The purpose of life insurance is to protect the policyholder, or the beneficiary, if different from the policyholder, from the financial loss that results from the death of the life insured, by restoring him to approximately the same financial position he enjoyed before that death. Insurance is not intended to provide a way of profiting from that death. Example Frank and Susan are both 30 years old, and they have three children, all under the age of five years old. Susan stays home to care for the children, while Frank earns a salary of $250,000 per year. They have a $350,000 mortgage with a 20-year amortization. Another couple, Jack and Jolene, are 46 and 42 years old, and they do not have children. Jack earns $40,000 and Jolene earns $25,000. They rent their home and have no major debts. Susan and Jolene both applied for $7.5 million of life insurance coverage on their husbands. In all likelihood, the underwriters would consider $7.5 million of coverage on Jack's life to be excessive, and they would refuse to issue a policy for that amount. However, they would likely agree that the amount is reasonable in Susan's case, considering Frank's income and young age, Susan's lack of income, their mortgage debt and the fact that they have three young children who require ongoing support. 9.2.2.4 Insurance Application History The applicant will be asked about any existing life insurance policies he owns on the life insured, as well as any other applications that are in progress. 
This is to ensure that the total amount of insurance the applicant has or will have on the life insured is kept to a reasonable amount. 9.2.3 About the life insured The risk to the insurance company stems from the health of the life insured, as well as any activities that might result in death. As a result, the insurance application is designed to gather as much information about the life insured as possible. Life Insurance Chapter 9, Application and Underwriting 171 9.2.3.1 Personal Information The application will seek personal information about the life insured, such as his, black small square current name and any former names, black small square date of birth, black small square current address, black small square social insurance number, black small square country of birth, black small square current nationality or resident status, black small square employer and occupation, black small square bankruptcy history. Application will also include questions about the life insured's lifestyle, such as, black small square is avocations, which are activities that he engages in outside his employment, such as participation in extreme sports, adventure travel, or dangerous hobbies, black small square is past travel experiences and future travel plans, black small square current or past smoking habits, including tobacco, cigars or cigarillos, marijuana or hashish, or use of tobacco substitutes or smoking cessation products, Black Small Square Alcohol Consumption, Black Small Square Narcotic or Other Recreational Drug Use, Black Small Square Driving History, Including Any Charges for Motor Vehicle or Traffic Violations, Example, Speeding, Illegal Lane Changes, Careless or Dangerous Driving, or Driving While Impaired, Black Small Square Criminal History 9.2.3.2 Medical Information A significant part of the application will be devoted to the health of the life insured. Questions usually cover the following, black small square height and weight, including any recent changes, black small square name of personal physician, black small square date of last medical consultation, reason for visit and outcome, black small square whether he had ever experienced, received treatment for or been investigated for a long list of medical conditions, black small square current medications, black small square other current treatments, exam Black small square whether his parents and or siblings experienced any of a specified list of health problems, example, cancer, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, high blood pressure, and details about any positive responses. Black small square for female applicants, their pregnancy history. Many of these questions require a yes or no answer and, if the applicant answers yes to any question that is looking for a no response, he is asked to provide additional details. Example. When Rebecca was filling out her life insurance application, she answered yes to the question that asked, have you ever had or been investigated or treated for conditions involving your heart or blood vessels because she had once visited the emergency room complaining of chest pain and shortness of breath. Later in the application, she was asked to provide details about the incident, including the name of the hospital and attending doctor, the types of tests he performed and the diagnosis. 9.2.4 Incomplete or Erroneous Information Agents should encourage applicants to fill out the application completely and honestly and warn them of the possible consequences for failing to do so, which could include voiding the contract. There are three main situations involving the application that can lead to problems, including Black Small Square Mistake Black Small Square Fraudulent Misrepresentation Black Small Square Incomplete Information 9.2.4.1 Mistake Sometimes an applicant makes an honest mistake or inadvertent error when filling out his application, without any intention to deceive the insurance company. It could be as simple as forgetting a surgery he had 30 years ago as a child, misunderstanding a previous diagnosis or entering his weight in kilograms when the application asked for his weight in pounds. A fact is considered to be a material fact if, had it been disclosed properly, it would have affected the underwriting of the policy. In other words, if the underwriter had known the truth, he may have declined the application or assessed a higher premium. Christina recently filled out a life insurance application. The application accidentally listed her birth year as 1954 instead of 1945. This mistake is material because risk of death increases significantly as the life insured ages. When it asked her to specify her most recent visit to a physician, she listed her annual checkup that occurred nine months ago. She forgot to mention that she met with her physician three months ago to get a flu shot. This mistake is not material because getting a flu shot is unlikely to impact the underwriter's evaluation. 
If a mistake is material in nature, and the insurance company discovers it within the first two years after the policy was issued or reinstated, it can void the insurance contract. However, once those two years have passed, the policy becomes incontestable and the insurance company cannot void the contract unless it can prove fraudulent misrepresentation. 9.2.4.2 Fraudulent Misrepresentation In general, underwriters assume that the information provided by an applicant is the truth, and they use this information to determine whether or not to issue the policy and what premiums to charge. Fraudulent misrepresentation occurs if the applicant intentionally provides the insurance company with false information or fails to disclose important information, to purposely mislead the insurance company in the hopes that the company will issue a policy and or lower its premiums. Example When Eric was traveling in Peru several years ago, he contracted a parasite that left him seriously ill. After spending several days being treated in hospital, he was discharged with a prescription for more antibiotics and was told that he should follow up with his family doctor when he returned home because there could be long-term complications, including organ damage. Eric recovered quickly and he never bothered to see his family doctor. When he later filled out a life insurance application, he knew he had some health issues that might concern the insurance company and that could result in higher premiums. He purposely neglected to disclose the incident in Peru, he decided that because it happened outside the country and he paid for it out of pocket, there was no way the insurance company could find out about it. Three years later, Eric suffered sudden liver failure and died during surgery. The liver damage was eventually linked to his experience with the parasite in Peru. Because Eric made a fraudulent material misrepresentation, the insurance company was able to void the policy even though the two-year contestability period had passed, and they did not pay the death benefit. One question that applicants are often tempted to answer fraudulently relates to smoking status. If the applicant says that he, or the life insured, if different, is a non-smoker, when in fact he is a smoker, this is fraudulent misrepresentation. If the life insurance company discovers this fact while the life insured is still alive, it can void the policy and return the premiums paid to date, or adjust either the premiums or the amount of the death benefit to reflect the true smoking status. If it discovers the fraud upon death of the life insured, it can deny the claim. Agents should therefore caution applicants about the importance of being completely honest when completing the section of the application dealing with smoking. 9.2.4.3 Incomplete Information Sometimes the applicant fails to complete all of the questions on the application, either by oversight or perhaps because he was not sure about how to answer a particular question. If the agent submits such an application to the insurance company, the underwriter will return the application and require the agent to obtain the missing information. This delay will leave the policyholder unprotected until the matter is rectified. 9.2.5 Agent's Comments The application usually includes space for the agent to make comments on anything he noticed during the application process or that he otherwise knows about the applicant or life insured that might impact the underwriter's assessment. For example, he might record Black Small Square his knowledge about the stability of the applicant's employment. Black Small Square his own observations regarding the health or smoking status of the life insured, particularly if they contradict the answers recorded by the applicant. Black Small Square his opinion on the truth or accuracy of the applicant's responses. 9.3 Temporary Insurance Agreement, TIA it can take several weeks or even months for the underwriter to completely process a life insurance application, particularly if additional information or a medical examination is required. An applicant typically submits an application because he has identified a need for the coverage, so he may not be pleased to learn it could take a few months before a policy is issued. For this reason, the agent typically has the authority to issue a temporary insurance agreement, TIA, which will provide some temporary coverage during the underwriting process. 9.3.1 Requirements for Coverage To obtain coverage under a TIA, the applicant must submit a completed life insurance application along with at least one month's premium. Life Insurance Chapter 9, Application and Underwriting 175 Most insurance companies will only issue a TIA if the applicant completes a separate TIA application form and is able to answer no to a short list of health-related questions about the life insured. These questions can be very broad, such as, black small square, in the past 60 days, have you consulted a doctor or other health practitioner and been told to have further examination, diagnostic test, or surgery which has not been performed or for which the results are not known? Black small square, 
Have you ever been treated for or had any indication of heart or circulatory disease, heart attack, high blood pressure, chest pain, abnormal ECG, stroke, transient ischemic attacks, diabetes, chronic kidney, liver or lung disease, cancer or tumor, multiple sclerosis, paralysis, motor neuron disease, Alzheimer's disease, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, AIDS, ARC or HIV infection, loss of speech, blindness or deafness? If the answer to any of the questions on the TIA application is yes, then a TIA is automatically denied. In addition, the life insured generally must meet certain age restrictions, example, between a minimum of 15 days old and a maximum of 70 years old. 9.3.2 Coverage Limits In most cases TIA coverage is limited to the lesser of, black small square a fixed amount, such as $250,000 or $500,000, and black small square the amount of coverage the applicant is requesting. TIA coverage is subject to the same terms and conditions as the policy being applied for. In particular, this means that the suicide exclusion provision will apply, so the TIA's death benefit will not be paid if the life insured dies by suicide. 9.3.3 Coverage duration depending on the insurance company, TIA coverage may begin as soon as the application and premium have been submitted, or it may not start until all medical evidence has been submitted. The TIA remains in effect until the earliest of, black small square its expiry date, usually 60 or 90 days, black small square the date the policy becomes effective, and black small square the date the insurance company notifies the applicant that his application has been denied and returns the premium. If the underwriter who is processing the application decides that additional information is required, he may also revoke the TIA by advising the applicant in writing and returning the premium. 9.3.4 Agents' Responsibilities The issuance of a TIA is not an automatic or guaranteed part of the application process. The agent should only issue a TIA if Black small square he has no concerns about the application or the likelihood that the underwriter will issue the requested policy, and Black small square the applicant submitted the first premium with the application. Example Richard is a life agent and he has just helped Arlene complete an application for life insurance. Arlene is diabetic and has high blood pressure. She admitted that she smokes regularly and Richard noticed that she had a persistent cough, which he duly noted in the agent's comments section of the application. Given the concerns about Arlene's health, Richard should not issue a temporary insurance agreement. 9.4 Underwriting by the Insurance Company Once the insurance company receives a completed application, its underwriter begins the task of evaluating the risks posed by the life insured. This section first discusses the traditional underwriting process, before examining accelerated underwriting. 9.4.1 Underwriting Guidelines Each insurance company typically has internal underwriting guidelines that provide an explanation of the underwriting requirements for each product. While the guidelines are specific to each company, they might cover Black small square a description of each condition or factor being evaluated. Black small square key elements that must be considered when evaluating that condition. Black small square a list or description of the additional information that must be gathered before a decision can be made, example policies for less than $100,000 of coverage may only require a blood test, while policies for over $1 million may require a medical by a licensed physician, plus a stress test and specified blood work. Black small square the most probable underwriting decision or a range of possible outcomes. Black small square height and weight tables for standard risks. The insurance company may have separate guidelines for medical, non-medical and financial underwriting. While agents are not expected to underwrite the policies themselves, they may find it helpful to review these guidelines so they can help their clients set realistic expectations about the probable outcome of their application. Example Chandra is a life insurance agent and he recently helped his client, Janine, complete an application for life insurance. He noticed that she reported a family history of diabetes and that she had recently lost a substantial amount of weight. Because he was familiar with the insurance company's underwriting guidelines, he was able to tell her that it was highly likely that the underwriters would request more information and require her to submit to a medical exam. He also warned her that she might not qualify for standard rates and that there was even a possibility that the underwriters would reject her application. 9.4.2 Attending Physician Statement, APS 
If the application indicates that the life insured has experienced a specified medical issue, the underwriter may request an attending physician statement, APS. Normally the application includes an acknowledgement that gives the insurance company permission to contact the doctor directly. The insurance company pays any fees the doctor charges for preparing the APS, and the doctor sends the APS directly to the underwriter. The APS usually provides Black Small Square a summary of the life insured's medical history. Black Small Square a description of his current health, medications, or other treatments. Black Small Square a prognosis from the doctor for any ongoing issues. 9.4.3 Medical Exam if the underwriter still has concerns about the health of the life insured after receiving an attending physician's statement, he may ask the life insured to undergo a medical exam. Sometimes the underwriter will request the medical exam without first obtaining an APS, either because he has significant concerns about the health of the life insured or because the insurance company simply has a policy of requiring a medical exam for policies over a certain face amount or when the life insured is of a certain age. This medical exam could include more than just a visit to the doctor, it could include blood, urine or saliva tests, electrocardiograms, ECGs, and more. Usually the medical exam is performed by a health practitioner who works for an independent paramedical company. For high-value policies or complex medical concerns, the underwriter may require the exam to be performed by a licensed physician or may order special tests, example, a cardiac stress test. Regardless of who performs the exam or the extent of the tests required, the insurance company pays any related fees. Some insurance companies have temporarily relaxed their requirements for in-person medical exams during the COVID-19 pandemic because of physical distancing requirements. If the application does not show any significant health concerns and the life insured falls within set age and coverage parameters, the policy may be underwritten without a medical exam or the collection of blood or urine. Many insurance companies increase the amount of coverage available without a medical exam to as much as $2 million, depending on the age of the life insured. For clients who are beyond the age or threshold amounts but without any significant issues identified in their application, the insurer may still be willing to underwrite the policy if the life insured can provide a doctor's report or medical records. Some companies also use an online or telephone interview to help determine if the application can be underwritten without an in-person medical exam or the collection of blood or urine. 9.4.4 Medical Information Bureau, MIB most life insurance companies in Canada and the United States choose to be a member of the Medical Information Bureau, MIB, by paying an annual fee. The MIB is a membership organization that facilitates an exchange of medical information about applicants between member insurance companies. When someone applies for life insurance at a MIB member company, they must be informed about the nature of the MIB. They must also sign a release that authorizes the insurance company to search for information about them on the MIB database and to share any applicable details of their current application with the MIB. When the underwriter at a MIB member company processes an application, he is required to report significant underwriting issues to the MIB. The MIB compiles this information in coded reports that represent different medical conditions and non-medical conditions, typically hazardous hobbies and adverse driving records, that could affect the insurability of the applicant. The next time the applicant applies for life insurance at an MIB member company, his MIB report will alert the underwriter to possible errors, omissions, and misrepresentations that he made in the application process. If the MIB report is inconsistent with the information provided by the applicant, the underwriter must investigate further to obtain more information about the reported medical history or condition prior to making an underwriting decision. In other words, the underwriter cannot use the MIB report itself as a basis for declining or rating an application, he must first verify that the problem actually exists. Ernie was living in Ontario when he applied for life insurance with ABC Insurance Company last year. On his application, he indicated that he had previously experienced a heart attack and had two related surgeries. He was also a heavy smoker and overweight. His application was declined. This year Ernie moved to Alberta and again applied for life insurance with XYZ Insurance Company. This time, he decided not to mention any of his heart problems, thinking that his health records would not be transferred between provinces. Also, he claimed to smoke only socially, a few cigarettes a month. He had also lost all of his excess weight, so he felt much more confident that his application would be approved. When Ernie had applied for insurance with ABC Insurance Company, 
they reported his heart problems to the Medical Information Bureau, MIB. When the underwriter at XYZ Insurance Company started working on his application, he searched the MIB database for any previous applications by Ernie. The MIB alerted him to the fact that another insurance company had reported that Ernie had heart problems and was a heavy smoker. While XYZ Insurance Company, S. Underwriter could not use this as a basis for denying Ernie's application, it did prompt him to request a copy of Ernie's past medical records and he also required Ernie to undergo a full medical exam, including various heart-related tests. Based on those results, the underwriter declined his application. 9.4.5 Motor Vehicle Record, MVR If the application fails to provide the requested details about driving history, or when the amount of coverage requested is above a certain level, the underwriter may request a copy of the Life Insured's Motor Vehicle Record, MVR, from the Provincial Motor Vehicle and Licensing Authority. This report provides a synopsis of the Life Insured's driving history over a specific period, 3 to 10 years, depending on the jurisdiction. The MVR includes a record of the Life Insured's Black Small Square Speeding or Other Moving Violations Black Small Square Chargeable Accidents Black Small Square Driving Under the Influence, DUI, Charges Black Small Square License Suspensions or Revocations Black Small Square Accumulation of Points It may seem strange that a life insurance underwriter would request a motor vehicle report because the application is not for automobile insurance. However, statistics have shown that a person's driving record directly influences his risk of death. In fact, Infractions such as failing to use a seat belt, using an electronic device while driving, running a red light or speeding will often cause the policy to be rated, resulting in much higher premiums. Rated policies are discussed in the section Risk Classes and their impact on premiums. 9.4.6 Inspection Report If the underwriter still has concerns about the application, he may hire a service company to investigate the life insured and then prepare an inspection report. The majority of inspections are completed via telephone, but for large coverage amounts a personal visit may be required. An inspection report usually focuses on non-medical issues and could include questions about the life insureds. Black small square habits e.g., smoking slash tobacco use, alcohol consumption. Black small square finances e.g., income, estimated net worth. Black small square occupation e.g., confirmation of employment, nature of duties. Black Small Square Driving Record e.g., History of Speeding Tickets, Careless Driving Black Small Square Avocation e.g., Participation in Extreme Sports or Hazardous Travel 9.4.7 Requests for Clarification or More Information If the application is not filled out completely or if the answers are vague, the underwriter may contact the applicant to ask for clarification or for more information. This can slow down the underwriting process, so it is important for the applicant to be as thorough as possible when completing the application. 9.4.8 Financial Underwriting Financial underwriting involves assessing the applicant's financial situation and the reason for obtaining life insurance to determine if Black Small Square the amount of coverage is reasonable based on his need and Black Small Square he can afford the premiums. The company's financial underwriting guidelines will usually specify what the maximum coverage can be, based on the intended purpose and the age of the life insured. For example, Black Small Square If the policy is intended to provide income replacement if the life insured dies, then the maximum coverage may be set at 30 times earned income if the life insured is between 16 and 30 years of age, down to 10 times earned income if he is between 60 and 69 years of age. Life Insurance Chapter 9 Application and Underwriting 181 Black Small Square If the policy is intended for estate preservation, the maximum coverage might be tied to the net worth of the life insured. Black Small Square If the policy is on the life of a university student, the maximum coverage may be tied to the intended occupation. 9.4.9 .9 People who are not Canadian citizens Life insurance companies may have different underwriting requirements for people who are not Canadian citizens. This section discusses how some of those special situations might be handled, but remember that each life insurance company may have its own methods and procedures. 9.4.9.1 .9 Permanent Residence A non-citizen who has been granted permanent residency status is generally eligible for the same coverage as a Canadian citizen. 
However, some additional underwriting may be required, which could include Black Small Square confirmation of permanent resident status Black Small Square if he has lived in Canada for less than one year, detailed blood work and a medical exam may be required. Black Small Square if he makes frequent or extended trips back to his country of origin or other countries, he may be rated as substandard risk, which would result in higher premiums, or the policy may include an exclusion for death occurring in the specified country. 9.4.9.2 Awaiting Permanent Residency A non-citizen who is currently living in Canada and who has applied for, but has not yet achieved permanent residency status, may or may not be eligible to apply for life insurance, depending on his unique situation and the individual insurance company's underwriting guidelines. Some insurance companies set maximum coverage amounts based on skill levels. For example, the underwriting guidelines of one insurance company specify that Black small square those with a highly skilled or managerial occupation, example, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, engineers, lawyers, might qualify for up to $10 million in coverage. Black small square those who pursue a trade-level occupation, example, electricians, plumbers, medical technologists, butchers, might qualify for up to $2 million in coverage. Black small square live-in caregivers, example, nannies, Personal support workers might qualify for up to only $250,000 in coverage. Black small square dependent spouses or children of the life insured might qualify for a percentage of the coverage on the life insured, example, 50%. Underwriters may require non-citizens awaiting permanent residency status who have lived in Canada for less than a year to undergo additional medical screening. They may also be asked to provide a copy of their work permit, proof that they have applied for permanent residency status, and proof of a pattern of earned income, unless they are a spouse or child of the life insured. 9.4.9.3 International Students International students, i.e., students from another country who come to study in Canada, are typically not eligible to purchase life insurance in Canada, unless they also fall into one of the newly landed immigrant categories discussed previously. September 4, 10 Frequent Travelers If the life insured is a frequent traveler, the insurance company may request further details about past travels and future plans, including the countries visited, and the frequency and duration of visits. As a result, the issued policy may have a substandard risk rating, which would result in higher premiums, or it may specify an exclusion for travel to specified countries. September 4, 11 Avocations Avocations are hobbies or activities that the life insured pursues outside his regular employment. Underwriters will be concerned about any activities or hobbies that expose the life insured to above-average risk of death. For example, black small square parasailing, black small square backcountry snowboarding, black small square mountain climbing, black small square scuba diving, black small square race car driving, black small square travel to countries prone to conflict, black small square piloting a private aircraft. If the life insured participates in such activities, the underwriter will likely collect additional information, such as, black small square how often the life insured engages in that activity, black small square when and where he carries out that activity, black small square his experience or certification in that activity, black small square history of accidents or certification violations. Life Insurance Chapter 9, Application and Underwriting 183 September 4, 12 Accelerated Underwriting even before the COVID-19 pandemic, some insurance companies were moving towards accelerated underwriting for some applications, up to maximum ages and coverage amounts. Accelerated underwriting leverages technology, existing data, computer algorithms, and artificial intelligence, AI, to evaluate applications. Insurers access data about the applicant's medical history through the Medical Information Bureau, MIB, driving habits through motor vehicle records, credit history, and any other available data. Algorithms combine all data points to quickly determine eligibility and cost of coverage. Note that accelerated underwriting and simplified issue are not the same thing. A simplified issue underwriting process makes use of a short application and instantly available evidence to quickly make an accept or reject decision without any human underwriting or detailed medical underwriting. Simplified issue underwriting does not provide the for the possibility of preferred rates for those in good health or rated policies for those with an increased risk of death due to their medical conditions. Premiums for these no-exam policies tend to be higher than policies that are fully underwritten. In contrast, accelerated underwriting is a fully underwritten process that makes use of data, 
tools, and modeling techniques to assess applications without gathering the more traditional underwriting evidence such as medical exams and laboratory testing. Unlike simplified issue underwriting, accelerated underwriting can result in policies issued at or close to fully underwritten retail rates, including preferred and rated classes. 9.5 Risk Classes and Their Impact on Premiums Recall that when evaluating the risk of the life insured, the underwriter starts with a baseline, example, 100, and then adds to or subtracts from this amount after evaluating each risk factor, based on how the life insured compares to the standard person of the same age. When this evaluation is complete, the underwriter can assign the life insured to a risk class. Each insurance company will have their own class system and number of classes, but general categories are discussed below. 9.5.1 Standard Every insurance company will have a standard or normal risk category, which represents the average person. If the life insured falls within the standard risk category, the premiums will be set at the standard rate. 9.5.2 Preferred Insurance companies usually have one or more preferred categories for people who present an exceptionally low risk. To qualify for a preferred risk category, the life insured usually has to go through some additional medical screening. People who fall into this category are eligible for preferred lower rates. 9.5.3 Rated If the life insured is in a rated risk class, it means that he represents an above average, but still acceptable, level of risk. Premiums in a rated class will be higher than standard rates, sometimes by a substantial amount, depending on the risk involved. 9.5.4 Exclusions Sometimes the life insured would have qualified for coverage if it were not for one specific factor that concerned the insurance company. The insurance company may issue a policy for the appropriate risk class, but specify an exclusion to the policy, which means that they will not pay the death benefit if death is a case covered by the exclusion. Example Michael immigrated to Canada from Lebanon 35 years ago, and he is a Canadian citizen. He recently applied for life insurance, and the underwriter noted that Michael was in exceptional good health and would normally be eligible for preferred rates. However, he also noted that Michael returns to Lebanon every other year to visit his parents and siblings, who still live in that country, which often experiences periods of armed conflict. Rather than declining Michael's application, the insurance company issued a policy at preferred rates with an exclusion for travel to Lebanon. This means that if Michael dies while in Lebanon, the death benefit will not be paid. 9.5.5 Upgrading Risk Class Once the insurance company issues a policy, it cannot decide to reassess the life insured at a later date or at a rating and charge a higher premium if his health has declined. In other words, the insurance company cannot downgrade his risk rating after the policy is issued. However, if a policy is issued on a rated basis and the reason for that rating no longer exists, the policyholder may be able to ask the insurance company to remove or decrease the rating with an appropriate decrease in premiums. Life Insurance Chapter 9 Application and Underwriting 185 Example When Bill first applied for life insurance, he was a commercial fisherman, which is one of the most dangerous occupations in terms of risk of death. While he was able to obtain insurance, the policy was rated and came with a hefty premium. Once his daughter was born, Bill left the fishing industry and he now works as a janitor for the local school board. Bill should ask his insurance company if the hazardous occupation rating can be removed from his policy, with a corresponding reduction in premiums. The reason an insurance company would consider such a request is competition, if the rating is not removed, the policyholder may be tempted to cancel the policy and apply for a new, unrated policy at another insurance company. 9.5.6 Declined If the life insured falls in the declined risk category, it means he represents an uninsurable risk and coverage is declined. The decline may be temporary or permanent, depending on the findings of the underwriter. If the decline is temporary, the underwriter will usually specify when reapplication is possible. A permanent decline means that no further reconsideration will be granted, regardless of the passage of time. 9.6 Client Factors That May Affect Premiums One of the components that affect life insurance premiums is the net cost of pure insurance, NCPI, which in turn is based upon the risk that the life insured will die during the period of coverage. This risk is evaluated during the underwriting process that was just discussed. There are many risk factors that are common to all people. 
This section examines those risk factors and their impact on the policy's premiums. 9.6.1 Age Age is one of the key factors used to determine insurance premiums. In general, a person's risk of death during any specific year increases as he gets older. As a result, policy premiums at the time of issue increase as the age at issue increases. Diagram 9.1 shows the annual premiums for a $250,000 10-year renewable term insurance policy for a male in the standard or normal risk class, based on his age at issue. Notice how the increase in premiums is not linear. This is because a person's risk of death increases somewhat exponentially as they age, particularly after age 60 or 65. Diagram 9.1, Impact of Age at Issue on Premiums 32. 9.6.1.1 Attained Age The premiums at issue or upon renewal are based on the attained age of the life insured at that time. Depending on the insurance company, attained age might refer to his black small square age on his last birthday, black small square age on his next birthday, black small square age on his closest birthday. 9.6.2 Gender statistics show that women tend to outlive men. This means that, all other things being equal, a man's risk of death at a specific point in time is greater than a woman's risk. As a result, policy premiums for a male are generally higher than for a female of the same age. Diagram 9.2 shows the annual premiums for a $250,000 10-year renewable term insurance policy for both a male and a female in the standard or normal risk class. Diagram 9.2 Impact of gender on premiums 33. Because men and women have different mortality rates, the premiums paid will depend on gender, and this raises the question of how premiums are determined for transgender individuals. In the past, this has been quite complicated but, as the world moves forward, insurers are working to keep up. Most insurers will underwrite the policy based on actual gender, although a few insurers may still use the gender assigned at birth. Some insurers may only recognize the gender that listed on the life insured's official documents, such as driver's license or passport. Others will only underwrite based on actual gender if the life insured has undergone transition surgery or is taking hormone therapy. Previous gender confirmation surgery should not disqualify the applicant from obtaining life insurance or impact the policy premiums. However, applicants who are planning to undergo gender confirmation surgery should be aware that the insurer will likely postpone the application until after surgery. To the best of our knowledge, gender non-binary is not a recognized option at this time. 9.6.3 Health Status or Risk Class As discussed in the section Risk Classes and Their Impact on Premiums, each insurance company will have its own system for classifying risk, but they generally have three to five health classes, including standard, below standard and above standard risk classes. Diagram 9.3 shows the annual premiums for a $250,000 10-year renewable term insurance policy for a male in various risk classes. Diagram 9.3, Impact of Health Class on Premiums 34. Below standard policies carry higher than normal premiums, while above standard policies may have preferred pricing. Smoking status is usually reflected by a below standard rating. 9.6.4 Hazardous Occupation If the life insured has a hazardous occupation, his risk class will likely be further adjusted by a rating based on that occupation, resulting in higher premiums. 9.6.5 Hazardous Lifestyle If the life insured has a hazardous avocation or hobby, in most cases this will be addressed by an exclusion in the policy for that activity. However, depending on the insurance company, the hobby, and how frequently the life insured engages in that activity, it may also result in a rating of the policy, resulting in higher premiums, or the application may even be denied. 34. Based on rates provided by Canada Life for a $250,000 10-year renewable term life insurance policy for a male in various health classes. Life Insurance Chapter 9, Application and Underwriting 189. 9.7 Company Factors That May Affect Premiums The insurance company may adjust premiums on new policies to address changes to its mortality costs, administration costs, and investment returns. 9.7.1 Mortality Costs Recall that an insurance company's mortality costs are the amounts the insurance company actually pays out in death benefits. 
If the company experiences higher mortality costs than it originally anticipated, it may increase premiums on new policies to compensate. 9.7.2 Administration Costs and Expenses A life insurance company is a business, and it incurs many business-related expenses, including black small square the costs of selling the policy, example marketing, salaries or commissions to agents, black small square underwriting the policy, example processing applications, undertaking medical exams, black small square issuing and administering the policy documents, black small square investigating claims, black small square processing claims. To the extent possible, the insurance company offsets these expenses through investment returns and annual policy fees. However, a portion of these costs may also be covered by the premium. Increasing expenses can put upward pressure on premiums for new policies. 9.7.3 Investment Returns The insurance company invests policy reserves for the purpose of earning investment income that can offset mortality costs and expenses. When current or expected investment returns decrease, the premiums for new policies generally increase to compensate for the lost revenue. 9.8 Reinsurance Insurance companies place an upper limit on the amount of coverage on any one individual that they are willing to assume responsibility for. This protects them financially from having to make a payment that could seriously undermine their finances. This upper limit is called the retention limit. An insurance company may still accept life insurance applications for amounts in excess of its retention limit, but it will only underwrite that policy if it can pass some of that risk on to one or more reinsurance companies. In essence, the insurance company ensures its risk of having to pay a death benefit that exceeds its retention limit. John applied for $15 million in life insurance coverage with Insure4 Life Company. Insure4 Life's retention limit is $10 million, but they were still interested in placing the policy. They contacted Rejure Company, a reinsurance company, to underwrite the additional $5 million of coverage, and Rejure agreed. Insure 4 Life issued a $15 million policy to John, and he pays the full premium directly to them. Insure 4 Life in turn pays a premium to Rejure. If John dies, Insure 4 Life will pay the full death benefit of $15 million, but then it will receive a death benefit of $5 million from Rejure. 9.9 .9 Issuing the Policy the underwriting process does not stop with the issuing of the policy, it continues right up until delivery and acceptance of the policy. 9.9.1 .9 Delivery In the past, the agent was required to deliver the policy directly to the applicant in person. The thought was that by having a face-to-face -face meeting with the applicant, the agent could ensure that nothing important has changed that would affect the insurability of the life insured. However, policies can now be delivered electronically via email or a user portal on the insurance company's website. For policies that undergo accelerated underwriting, the client and the life agent may even get text messages saying that the policy has been accepted and that it will be delivered electronically within the next few days. For policies that do not undergo accelerated underwriting, prior to delivery, the agent should review the contract in detail with the client and verify that the coverage is what the client applied for. The agent should also explain the major provisions of the contract, including Black Small Square Grace Period Black Small Square Incontestability Black Small Square Suicide Exclusion Provisions These provisions are discussed in more detail in the module Ethics and Professional Practice. For policies that do not undergo accelerated underwriting and that are not automatically delivered electronically, before final delivery, the agent should obtain verbal and written confirmation that a change in insurability has not occurred, which might be the case if the life insured. Black Small Square has experienced a change in health. Black Small Square changed his occupation. Black Small Square changed his recreational activities. Black Small Square has experienced a change in financial status. Once the applicant confirms that there has been no material change and pays any outstanding premiums, if applicable, then the agent can deliver the policy. However, if the applicant cannot confirm this or fails to remit the proper payment, or if the agent has reason to suspect that there has been a material change despite the applicant's assurance that all is fine, the agent must not complete the delivery. Instead, he should contact the underwriter for further consideration and advise the client that the contract is not yet in force. 9.10 Acceptance the final step in the activation of the policy is getting the policyholder to sign and date an acknowledgement stating that he has received and accepted the policy. This confirmation can be done electronically.
After accepting the policy, the policyholder must be given a minimum of 10 days to review the policy. During this time, he can choose to return it to the insurance company for cancellation and a full refund of all premiums paid. This is the client's right of rescission, also known as the 10-day free look provision. Rescission is the right of all parties to a contract to back out of the contract within the legal parameters to do so. An insurer can exercise this right during the two-year contestability period or any time in the case of fraudulent misrepresentation or if the contract has a cancelable clause. 9.11 Group Life Insurance The application and underwriting process discussed thus far in this chapter applies to individual life insurance. One of the big benefits for members of a group life insurance plan is that they are covered for the base amount offered by the plan regardless of their health because underwriting is not done on an individual basis. However, a group plan still goes through an underwriting process. 9.11.1 Basic Group Life Insurance When underwriting the basic life insurance provided by a group insurance plan, the underwriter looks at the demographics of the group as a whole, including the mix of ages, genders, and occupations. He then uses the insurance company's experience with similar groups to determine the average risk per person and to calculate the premium. Premiums are typically quoted as a rate for every $1,000 of coverage. If the group plan provides different benefit levels for different classes of employees, the rate will be calculated separately for each class. These same rates will apply to every person in the group or class, regardless of that person's age, gender, smoking status, or health status. The insurance company will usually recalculate the premium every year to reflect changes in the group's demographics over time. For example, if the group's average age increases, the premiums per member will likely increase as well to reflect the greater risk of death. 9.11.2 Additional Coverage Some group life insurance plans give members the option of buying additional life insurance coverage on top of the base coverage that all members receive. A member who wishes to buy the additional coverage is usually required to provide evidence of insurability, and the underwriter will assess the member on an individual basis. Unlike the premiums for the base coverage, premiums for the additional coverage are usually based on the member's age and smoking status. 9.11.3 Creditor Life Insurance While creditor life insurance is a type of group life insurance, in most cases the life insured must provide at least basic evidence of insurability to obtain coverage. Often this means just answering a few health questions on the application. A yes response to a question that requires a no answer or vice versa, will usually prompt a medical underwriting, which could include a more detailed questionnaire, blood or urine tests, or even a medical exam. However, if all the responses are correct, then the application may be automatically approved. When creditor insurance is offered through a financial institution, the applicant must complete the application without help from the bank employee, because that employee is not an insurance agent. Some companies limit the amount of creditor insurance that they are willing to offer without more comprehensive medical underwriting, example, $250,000 or $500,000. Depending on the program, the creditor insurance premiums may be set at Black Small Square a fixed monthly rate per $1,000 of outstanding balance, commonly used for credit cards, or Black Small Square a fixed monthly rate per $1,000 of original balance, commonly used for mortgages. In both cases, a different rate will apply to different age groups, example, 18 to 25, 26 to 30, 31 to 35. 9.11.3.1 Post-Claim Underwriting One of the drawbacks of group creditor insurance is that a claim may be denied as a result of post-claim underwriting. This is the practice of issuing the policy with little or no underwriting, i.e., just a couple of yes-slash-no health questions, and then doing a more thorough underwriting only after the life insured has died. Sometimes this post-claim underwriting determines that the life insured did not actually qualify for insurance and the claim is denied. There is no way to determine ahead of time if post-claim underwriting will result in the claim being denied, so this raises concerns about the surety of coverage. Because the coverage is only denied upon the death of the life insured, obviously there is no opportunity to go back and seek other coverage. Chapter 10, Assessing the Client's Situation Competency Component Black Small Square Assess the Client's Needs and Situation Competency Subcomponents Black Small Square Determine the Client's Situation, 
Black Small Square assessed the appropriateness of the client's existing coverage in regard to his or her situation. Life Insurance Chapter 10, Assessing the Client's Situation 195